Honestly, if I had to rate it, I would give Chingwa like an 8 out of 10. And I'm sorry, MIT, I will give MIT like, like a 7 out of 10. And to be honest, I have to be honest, you know. Hey Hello everyone. everyone, and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. For the ones who don't know me, I'm Zahra Rastadegi, a 20-year-old polyglot from Iran, and I can speak in eight different languages. I'm studying economics and finance at Tsinghua University, and today we're having a very, very special guest. You guys know Gohar Khan. Hey everyone, my name is Gohar. I go by Gohar's Guide on the internet. Uh, I'm an MIT graduate, and I post study advice for students uh, on social media. I, I upload videos about college admissions, personal finance, career tips, and I've been doing this for the past five years, and it's super cool to see the community we've grown online. We're doing a little comparison of Tsinghua versus MIT. So we're gonna be comparing, you know, what the admissions process is like, what the culture is like, what the dormitories and living situation is like. Um, so we're gonna dive in and kind of see what the main differences are. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have a competition between Tsinghua and yep. MIT. Which one do you think is gonna win? <laughs> MIT for sure, easily, 100%. So can you yes. tell us a little bit about admission at MIT? Yes, definitely. So the admissions process at MIT is what they call holistic. So mm -hmm. it's based not only on just your academic performance, but also your personal qualities. Mm -hmm. So they look at your extracurriculars, your essays, even your college interview to see um, not only if you're an academic fit, but if you're like a personality fit as well. Mm -hmm. And so that makes MIT really competitive because not only do you need the grades, but you need the personality on top of that. To so for which one is easier? international students or americans who De gets easier definitely american students okay. our international admissions at mit is very competitive it's very tough like the admission process for international chinese students are very different so chinese students have to take gaokao which is the college entrance exam and it's very difficult they usually study uh since they were very kid mm -hmm. and they all prefer for it like to get into Tsinghua. uh it includes science english math and what else Chinese, yep. right? And it's pretty competitive. Each year, there are more than 10 million students taking part in Chinese Gaokao. So for people, in order for them to get into Tsinghua, they should be the best in their city. So the first 10 people in some cities, even less. So that's very competitive. But for international students, we're not having 10 million people, yeah. 10 million internationals applying for Tsinghua, of course. So oh, we usually take SAT, AP, Definitely high scores. We need TSK, uh, which is uh, the Chinese exam. And of course, we need a lot of extracurricular. I feel like you were also talking earlier about like leadership and uh, community service. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's one similarity between both schools. I feel like many American colleges also really care a lot about, uh, you know, are, are you a leader? Are you active in your community? Uh, because they sort of want those kinds of people on their campus. I took my last final last week and the pressure was crazy. Like. These two semesters at Tsinghua were probably the hardest two semesters of my entire life. So I want to ask you, how was the pressure there at MIT? How many hours were you studying and how were you preparing for the exams? The pressure at MIT was so intense. When I got to MIT, I really had to rewire my brain in terms of how to study and how to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to rely a lot on outside help. I feel like in high school, you know, you're able to figure things out by yourself. But for me, I had to rely on, you know, my classmates. There were like tutoring centers. Office hours are huge at MIT. Um, that's like a great resource for students. But the pressure was really intense and I was studying for at least like five to six hours a day after classes and uh, after extracurriculars. And that honestly didn't give me too much free time, especially my freshman year. Mm -hmm. How helpful the classes were? Could you like learn everything and be good at like the exam just by hearing the professor? Unfortunately, no. I feel like my freshman year, I, I went to a lot of my lectures in the beginning of the semester, but by the end, I found myself relying very heavily on the lecture recordings because I was able to like slow it down a little bit. I was able to replay important parts. And so for me, a lot of it was self-taught. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's almost the same thing at Tsinghua. So at Tsinghua, I feel like the international students and the Chinese students' life experience is very different. Students just like me who have been studying Chinese for three or two years, it's like extremely difficult. You mainly rely on self-studying because learning everything like 100% in the class for us is impossible. Especially that there is a very huge competition, especially among Chinese students. Why? Because Ever since they step into Tsinghua, like they start their bachelors, they, they start thinking about their masters. Yeah. 
Why? Because you should have very, very high GPA here in order for you to like directly get into a master's degree at Tsinghua. My uh, major right now, like economics and finance is like the second in the world. So of course our exams are super difficult. For me, sometimes I feel like they're like IQ tests. Yeah. Like I do understand the entire book, the lectures, I watch them. And then during the exam, like how, where did this come from? And I feel like you cannot know them unless you have a very high idea. We're not only having the pressure of learning that subject, we're also having the pressure to learn it in another language. Yeah. So I'm putting like three times more time as other Chinese students because first, I need to memorize vocabulary and then memorize how the questions are going to be. And then during the exam, I sometimes feel like it's gibberish. Yeah. All right, so it seems like the academic parts are very similar between both of our schools. Like we just go to very, very hard colleges. But what's the overall a campus vibe like? Again, divided into Chinese and international. So as an international student with a pretty good Chinese, uh, that's very shocking that I barely have Chinese friends. And I'm always with like the international circle. They really love how everybody is super motivated here. So uh, one of my biggest issues before coming to Tsinghua was that I had a lot of big goals, but people around me were making me feel down. Whoa. Feel like, okay, stop being too ambitious. Here, everybody's pushing you and helping you. The majority of the Chinese students are usually with each other. And because the pressure here is a lot, they don't really have a lot of time to go out and come to like the international environment and try to make friends with us. But the couple of Chinese friends who I have are super supportive. Like I have a few Chinese friends who put like the past three weeks of my exam and final weeks just to teach me. Wow. And they're super supportive and they're always saying that you're our guest and we know your difficulties way more than us. So we need to offer this help. That's amazing. I feel like the student vibe at MIT is very similar. I feel like students are incredibly supportive of each other. And I feel like that's surprising for schools like Tsinghua or MIT. Like you would assume that the students who are scoring really highly on these exams would be very competitive with one another. But I think at MIT, the school is just so hard and the curriculum is just so rigorous that we almost have to like team up together to defeat like the school itself. I feel like there's like no space for us to compete with one another. Like we, like we almost have to, um, like stick together and bond together just to survive the academic rigor at the institute. I want you to compare MIT's campus with Tsinghua's campus. I've never been like, I actually have no idea about MIT, how it looks like. So can you please compare a little bit and see, tell me what you think about here? Definitely. So the one thing that I noticed is that Tsinghua's campus feels more like in a mini city of sorts. There are gates all around campus and it feels like everything is very self-contained. Mm -hmm. I think MIT is more embedded into the city of Cambridge where uh, there's a lot of just kind of walking in and out. Uh, it doesn't feel like there are barriers around MIT. I would say MIT's campus is a lot smaller. I think students here at Tsinghua have to bike pretty much everywhere they go, whereas uh, at MIT you can walk from class to class. It seems like Tsinghua's campus also just has a lot more spaces for students to be outside. I feel like there's a lot of nature embedded on campus. Mm -hmm. I think MIT, because it's in a city, doesn't really have that sense of nature. How much do you rate Tsinghua's campus and how much do you rate MIT's? It's really hard. Tsinghua's campus is... The campus itself is beautiful, I will say that. And then it also has just so many just beautiful buildings, like the auditorium, for example, that we saw yesterday, like the architecture outside of that was absolutely stunning. Um, I feel like there are certain buildings on Tsinghua's campus when I look at it, I'm just in awe. I'm just like, how did someone actually build this? So honestly, if I had to rate it, I would give Tsinghua like an eight out of 10. <laughs> And I'm sorry, MIT, I will give MIT like, like a seven out of 10 in terms of the campus, but I, I have to we be won. honest. I have to be honest, you know, uh, but both campuses are beautiful. Good, so you think Tsinghua looks better than MIT? I think Tsinghua, Tsinghua's campus is more interesting than MIT's. Okay. <laughs> so we want this part, right? <laughs> Seems like it, yeah. At Tsinghua, we have over 20 canteens and including halal canteens, Chinese, Western. How would you compare it with MIT? What do you think about All it? All right, now this is where you're gonna get like the most intense reaction from me because yes. the food here at Tsinghua honestly blew me away. Especially there's this one canteen called Jijin Canteen. Did I yes. pronounce that right? True. Okay. Yeah. So this canteen was incredible. It has five different floors or four different floors, mm -hmm. each with like a different theme to it. Um, super packed, but really modern. The food was fantastic. Um, I haven't seen a single college have a, like, a, like a canteen or dining hall like that in my life. 
Uh, I would say MIT's dorms or MIT's canteens are smaller, um, but the food there is also really nice. Mm -hmm. I think each one just has like a distinct sort of theme or flavor to it. And you know what I really love about uh, Tsinghua's canteens is that they also do respect Muslims. So like we have two canteens and one of them is actually like a restaurant which is only for only Muslim and the meat and everything is halal. So the tuition fee at Tsinghua University for bachelor's degree is usually like three to a hundred dollars which is very cheap and we usually have a lot of scholarships so I'm on scholarship we have three types of scholarships and a good number of international students do have that and our dormitory is also very cheap I said it's like four dollars our lunch my lunch never exceeds two dollars uh, so that's very good for an international student so I want to ask you how is it in MIT and in the US okay so our numbers are nowhere near the same uh, tuition at a school like MIT or any top school is really going to cost you anywhere between seventy to ninety thousand dollars a year, and that includes tuition, room, and board. Uh, but the one thing is that MIT and these top schools they have fantastic need-based aid for both domestic and international students. And so, for example, at MIT, uh, if your family makes below a certain threshold, I think it's about one hundred fifty or even two hundred thousand uh, dollars. The institute will cover your full tuition and even pay for your room and board. And I think what a lot of students find is that not only do they get to go to these schools for free, uh, but in some instances, they actually get money back because the school will also provide funds for books and school supplies and other materials. Uh, though I do want to paint an accurate picture. Uh, this is usually the case for students who are uh, below this income threshold. Students who are above it do have to sometimes take out student loans just to make sure they can afford the cost of tuition. But by and large, uh, the vast majority of students at MIT graduate debt-free, I think 80 to 90 percent, and so I do think it's a very valuable uh, return on investment. Today, uh, we had a marathon at Tsinghua like two hours ago, and it was called Graduation Marathon. So for a lot of major events we have at Tsinghua, we actually do have marathons too. So right now for the graduation, we had a marathon and the students were running a couple of kilometers here. So we have something that says, Wu Tiu, Wu Tsinghua, no sports, no Tsinghua. And that's very important. Sports is super important at Tsinghua, and uh, there, there are a lot of strict rules on our PE classes. So I want to ask you, how is that MIT? So I would say MIT, we don't have a strong sports culture, but we do prioritize wellness. And so, for example, you know, at MIT, it's not like a normal state school in the U.S. where you might have like a really strong sports culture around like basketball or football. Uh, but MIT does a really great job of ensuring that students are taking care of themselves and active. So, for example, we're required to take eight PE courses during our time, uh, during our four years in college. And a lot of these classes span a wide variety of, uh, of sports. So you can do fencing, pickleball, sailing, basketball. Uh, and it's really interesting to see the wide array of athletic facilities and resources the school also has. I will say among some of the colleges I have visited in the US, MIT surprisingly has some of the best gyms and fitness centers, uh, which you might not really expect out of a tech school. And uh, I feel like I got a similar impression here at Chingwa, where it's yeah, like- tech school. Yeah, tech school, but like athletics and sports are valued and, and sort of uh, invested in. And one similar thing about Chinghua and MIT is that we cannot graduate without passing the swimming yes, exam. <laughs> yes, I was really surprised to hear that because the swim test is like a really, um, it's at MIT, it's at a few colleges, but whenever I tell students about it, they're so shocked. They're like, you have to do what to graduate? So before coming to Tsinghua, I knew that it was really academically rigorous. And just, you know, having heard about the Gaokao, I genuinely thought that most students here would just be studying all day. I thought that the main priority would be academics and nothing else. And although that it does seem like that is the case, it does seem like students are truly like locked in here and studying all the time. It really is refreshing to see how the school has balanced that academic side with more of like, uh, the personal side, whether through extracurriculars or traditions, you know, like the marathon, for example. So it does seem like, you know, it's not just a school for academics, but it also has like a broader culture to it that, that is uh, sort of wholesome to see. So what is your recommendations to the new students who want to apply to MIT? That is a great question, because that is exactly how I started on social media. I gave <laughs> students advice about college admissions. So to students who want to get into MIT, the number one tip that I have is to focus on your narrative. Uh, ultimately, the majority of students who are applying to MIT have met the academic threshold. You know, they're, they've gotten a 1500 on their SAT, they have a 40 GPA, they're, they're valedictorian or top 10% of their class. And so what sets students apart is their narrative, uh, you know, their extracurriculars, 
Is there a certain subject that they're interested in? Have they perfected a certain skill? You know, an example might be a student does like a research project while they're in high school, or maybe they start a business, or maybe they are really into cartography and map making and drawing, and that's like a big hobby of theirs. Uh, you know, MIT wants to see students who are not just smart, but interesting in other ways. And I think with this in mind, you know, you can start building up your theme and your narrative throughout your four years in high school. Be authentic and be genuine. I think many students try to fake their resume to sound more impressive, mm -hmm. but I think the best resumes are the ones where the students are genuinely doing the activities they want to do uh, because the colleges can see that and they admire that in, in students. Do you think getting into MIT or getting into an Ivy League is the only way for us to succeed? Because there are a lot of students who applied to a lot of Ivy Leagues, a lot of top universities in the US or even in China, Tsinghua, but they did not get in and they're probably feeling sad or what do you have to tell them? Is this everything? It is not. And I know that sounds funny to coming from like an MIT student, right? Like, like it might sound weird for me to tell you that an MIT degree or an Ivy League degree isn't everything. What I've noticed is that in the short term, yes, the name can help you out. For example, your immediate uh, job after graduation, if you have MIT on your resume, that's gonna help 100%. Mm -hmm. But over the long term, over the course of your life, it's really about your character and less about your pedigree. Like the people who have grit and perseverance and are always just working hard towards a certain goal, they will be successful no matter what, with or without the MIT degree or with or without the Ivy League degree. Professors, a lot of them say that the main thing you're gonna get from Tsinghua is the networking. Mm -hmm. So this might even be more important than the name itself. So the people you meet, the connections you make, and that's actually the biggest change that I have tried my best to make during my university semesters, or I wanted to say during my university <laughs> years, that's not it that to be more extroverted and to try to make as much as connections as I can, to go to as many activities as I can. And that's very nice because when I go to activities, I see that some of the students are not even from Tsinghua, but that does not make them not come and not make those networkings because I really feel like networking is probably one of the most important thing. And afterwards it comes other things and university and uh, this degree is just a part of the uh, journey, not all of it. But just know that everyone around you also wants to meet other people as badly as you do. And so often it's as simple as just approaching them, saying hi, and uh, you know, that's sometimes what it takes to just make a new friend. I've just finished covering many of the differences between MIT and Tsinghua. And so now it is time for the moment of truth. Okay. Who is the winner? Who is the winner? Drum roll, please. Both? Both. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like both schools have their merits and I feel like it really depends on what kind of learner you are and the environment that you're looking for. Both schools are incredible in their own ways, um, but I think ultimately you can't go wrong with either choice and it really just comes down to your personal preference. Yeah, and we actually need to make a deal. You come to Tsinghua and I go to MIT, so yes. you can have both <laughs> yes. experiences. No, definitely. Yeah, why not? Okay, thank you so much. It was such an amazing conversation I had with you. Yeah, of course, this was great. And guys, uh, Tsinghua is a beautiful school. If you haven't you know, looked into it before, definitely do so. There's so much to learn about here and so much to see. Yeah, sure. We also made another video on Gohar's YouTube channel. You guys can watch it. It's actually one of my most favorite videos. We showed you guys around the campus. Of course, you guys all have Gohar's YouTube channel, but if you don't, you can go check it out and wait for the new YouTube video because I'm super excited for that. We can collaborate on an MIT tour video together. Yep, that's going to be great. Subscribe, like, follow for more.